Uh, you know, everybody wants to go for a finish. You want to have fight of the night. You want to have knockout of the night. So I would have liked to have gone a little bit differently, but I still came out with the win, so I'm happy with that. And does getting a win over a previously undefeated opponent, does it, does it make the win that much more special for you? It, you know, it really does. I was, I was saying there's that one for her, there's that one, and when it finally was delivered, it, it's definitely a good feeling. You haven't fought in a while. Cage dress going back in there. Did you kind of feel pretty comfortable? No, uh, no, I felt really comfortable. I was fortunate enough that I was able to compete in Taps for Taps and uh, also compete in the Eddie Bravo Invitational under 10th Planet. So as a result of competing in that, I was able to knock off any rust I might have had. So courtesy of that, working with 10th Planet, make sure that there's no rust that builds up. What? Here, UFC 157 was a historic moment. Here we are at Madison Square Garden for 205. You have to compare walking out for both of those. What, what sort of is the better one in your mind? You know, that's really hard. That The atmosphere at UFC 157, even even to this day in experiencing this fight, I haven't felt a crowd's energy like that. Throughout every moment of that fight, you could feel the uproar and the disappointment and the back and the forth, and I've never felt that before. But walking out to Madison Square Garden and the history that's here with boxing, with all the, the musical events that they've ever had, my family being from New York City, there's also no comparison for that. You really you can't compare the two. What was that feeling like being out in Madison Square Garden in the actual, you know, the Kind of what the fight capital was of New York, you know, what was that feeling like for you to have that? Moment? It's it's an amazing feeling. I mean, it's almost like your skin's tingling. Is the only way I, I can really describe it. Uh, after coming in for weigh-ins, I didn't expect for the entire place to be filled for weigh-ins of all things. And now to come out and actually fight and just feel the energy and you can hear the crowd. It's again, it just it's uh, you can feel everybody's energy on your body as you're competing. How did you feel about the split decision? Just because a lot of people, uh, you know, social media kind of were. Uh, scoring the fight your way, did you feel like that you had more rounds than what the judges said? Yeah, I definitely did, but again, when you make the mistake of letting it go to, to the judges and to the decision, it, there's always going to be that risk. It's human nature, we make mistakes. I knew that once I heard that split, my only hope was that they saw what everybody else saw and that it was two to three and uh, that we would take that decision, and thankfully they did. You looked like you were in a bit of trouble at one stage, you like you badly hurt. Did you, did you feel any point that... Yeah, she definitely rocked me for a little bit, but I was able to keep my feet underneath me and go back for her and, and not stop in the fight. How would you like to get back in there as far as uh, your next fight? Because obviously I'm sure you want to keep uh, you know, active in the octagon. Yeah, absolutely. I hate taking time off. My first year of fighting, I had, I think, eight or nine fights, and that's the tempo that I'm used to. That's the tempo I like. So as soon as I can get back in, the better. Is the Brooklyn card one that you're looking at uh, you know, coming up uh, next year? That would be awesome. If I can get back in and, and get right back in New York, I'd love to. And you got to keep an eye on uh, what's going to be happening on later on in the night between Raquel Pennington and Misha Tate. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm always gunning for the title, so if they're not the title contenders and if they're not, they don't have the belt, they're not my main concern. But there's still people that I know are in title contention, so I have to be mindful of what they're doing. Because you have a big name value. You said after the fight, you'll fight anybody. Do you think that's the right approach, or do, is it time to sort of look at the rankings and choose the bigger names to make your way back to a title? When I say that I'll fight anybody, I mean that whoever they put in front of me, I'll, I'll go there. But ultimately, my camp always makes the decision. They do the educated guesses for me. They're the ones that do all the research and tell me who the intelligent uh, – for my career who the intelligent opponents are. So while I'll say I'll go out there and do anything, they're the ones that wrangle me in and tell me, no, that's not best for you. And they're kind of that, that good you know, angel on your shoulder that tells you, don't do this, do that. So I let them make those decisions. I just go out as a body. The odds makers had you as an underdog heading into this one. Do you feel like this is the type of win you know, people are going to finally start giving you some respect? Hopefully not. I like coming in as the underdog. I mean, if anything, having the crowd against me, having everybody doubt me, makes it uh, that much of a, more of a glorified win when I go out there and prove them all wrong. How are you going to celebrate tonight? It's a big win here in New York. I have family and friends out here, so we're going to go out to dinner, get to see New York City. I mean, it's a city that never sleeps. So we're going to go out and actually enjoy the town until everybody leaves in the morning. Does it help when you're preparing for a fighter such as Caitlin that you do have a common opponent in Lauren Murphy that you're able to watch it from the perspective of that you fought Lauren and seeing how differently she fought? Yeah, no, definitely that, that helps a lot, knowing the approach that we both had for that opponent. But at the same time, we all have, we both have our different strengths and our weaknesses. What really helped is that I have people like Bill Crawford and Manolo Hernandez in my corner doing the educated uh, decisions for me and weighing what it is that I need to do to make sure that I benefit the most in the fight, and they tell me. And then I have teammates like Alima McFarlane who comes in there, and she hel helps mimic the opponent, so that helps me out so much. And then I have people like Gabe Tuttle, Richie Martinez, who help with my jiu-jitsu games, so they make sure that I'm not going to make any mistakes on the ground that other people made. Did you see or speak to Ronda Rousey at the weigh-ins yesterday? No, I had already left by the time she oh, got there. Right. Yeah. <laughs>